Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the program, Afternoon Edition. My name is Isa Nu. Today, we are going to be discussing issues that pertains to um, the 2023 budget. As you are aware, last week, the President um, did present the budget before the National Assembly, and so many issues were raised with regards to how they can be able to meet up with what is contained in the budget. As we speak now, some NDAs have also started defending, defending the budget in order for them, for the House, to be able to ascertain what they can do and how they can facilitate um, the process. So in an attempt at national planning, every year Nigeria draws up a budget at the federal level. Um, this budget, which usually captures everything a budget should capture, um, taking into consideration the income and expenditure um, the country forecast in the next fiscal year. The president and his team usually draw up the budget, which is then presented to the legislature, which proceeds to pick it apart, prescript by prescript, in one of the more um, salient and salubrious demonstration of the salutary principles of check and balances and separation of powers. The executive in different states also draws up their own budget. We still undergo the routine ritual at the state legislature for passage uh, into law. So this is a major issue. Before you plan, um, definitely, or while you are still planning, you have to make sure you drop a budget um, that can foresee beyond and what you've planned in order to have a better um, implementation. So today we are going to be discussing this with nobody but uh, Mr. Abdullah Farouk, who is a financial expert, and um, he will be giving us details on what we need to understand about the 2023 budget. So we'll go on a very short break, and when we return back, we continue with the conversation. Mr. President, last Saturday, the country which I have the honor to represent, the Federation of Nigeria, became independent and assumed the rights and the responsibilities of a sovereign state. Today, Nigeria has been admitted into the United Nations organization and assume still more responsibilities. I wish to make our position plain beyond any matter of doubt as regards the African continent. We in Nigeria appreciate the advantages which the size of our country and of its population give us, but we have absolutely no aggressive intentions we shall never impose ourselves upon any other country and shall treat every African territory, big or small, as our equal because we honestly feel that it is only on that basis of equality that peace can be maintained in our continent. We in Nigeria are a populous country. There are about 40 million of us and our territory is relatively large. We are willing to learn before we rush into the field of international politics. But we are totally unwilling to be diverted from the ideals which we think true. That is the reason, Mr. President, why we in Nigeria shall not be found to align ourselves as a matter of routine with any particular bloc. Indeed, I hate the very idea of blocks existing at all in the United Nations. It seems to me to be a contradiction in terms. And when we hear the world crying out for peace, we may receive the inspiration to deal with these intractable problems and be able really to devote all our resources to the advancement of mankind by applying those eternal truths which will inevitably persist long after we ourselves are utterly forgotten. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, welcome back. I'm from the short break. Um, 
So, um, good afternoon, Mr. Farouk Abdullah, and welcome to the afternoon edition. Yeah, good afternoon, you, sir. It's nice having you today because um, the issue of um, budget um, is very, very important whenever um, the proposed budget has been presented before um, the National Assembly, and the President just did that. What is your reaction with respect to the budget that was presented? Uh, thank you, Issa. My reaction is not pretty far from uh, the reality, or rather it, is, it will speak of uh, the reality in terms of our expectations uh, and the impact the budget is going to have uh, come 2023. It's the duty of any government to determine what, how it is going to generate uh, income, that's revenue, and how that income is going to be effectively and efficiently managed. And that is why such uh, pre-plan in form of budget are very important. So uh, if you look at the two key uh, important components in the budget, which is the revenue and uh, expenditure, uh, frankly speaking, uh, there is nothing to write home about because more or less uh, the moment I went through the budget I just told myself that honestly speaking here in Nigeria economically speaking we are in a timing bomb so uh, when you look at also the key assumptions that the budget was built upon, uh, you will know that the reality about the implementation of it and the effective management of it can be far from the truth, or rather far from the obvious. It is projected that uh, one important key assumption is that the oil price is pegged at $70 per barrel exchange rate at $435 uh, dollars per barrel and also oil production about 1.6 uh, million uh, liters production per, uh, per month. Mm. So these key assumptions uh, and other also assumptions in terms of the revenue that the country will generate I think it's not, it doesn't speak of the reality because if you look at uh, historical track records in terms of budget implementation, uh, nearly 60% of uh, the budgeted revenue is only realized. You understand? So let's assume Nigeria were able to realize 70% uh, of the budgeted amount as revenue. That means we are having a shortfall. The projected deficit of uh, 10 point, uh, nine or 10 point something trillion will be skyrocketed, will be high because the revenue that we think is going to offset the expenditure will not be optimally achieved based on uh, projections. And uh, secondly, if you look at the expenditure aspect, I think there are a lot of uh, abnormalities on that because uh, any government, especially at the heat of uh, economic challenges and uh, crisis, ought to have done everything possible to curb uh, government spending. You know, I believe if you look at uh, historical budgets in Nigeria, you will agree with me that. Uh, our government is always good at increasing two costs. One is the legitimate cost of uh, governance, and secondly, the illegitimate cost of corruption. The legitimate uh, cost of governance, you can look at the redundant cost and expenses that are there and are not necessarily going to yield any benefit in return in the country are always been increased year after year. So this speaks of uh, our bad uh, implementation or drafting of budget strategies in the country. We must have to uh, change that mindset. Also, 
the debt servicing ratio in Nigeria, uh, the debt service uh, profile, the debt profile in the country is very, very poor. It is leading us into economic uh, troubles, you know, because in, if you look at in uh, 2012, the total uh, debt profile in the country was to a tune of 10 trillion naira. While over time today, we are talking of 40 something uh, trillion naira. In the first quarter of 2022, uh, nine point, over 9.5 billion naira was spent on a daily basis to service debt. You get it? So look at also, uh, compare if you want a, uh, a country to uh, prosper economically speaking, if you want to improve economic activities, there are key areas uh, that you have to look at, that you have to focus on. That is uh, infrastructural revamp. We have always been told that the borrowings are going to improve or revamp our infrastructure over time. In every project, that has always been the story. But what is the reality? Nothing to write home about. Today, the debt servicing in the 2023 uh, budget is to a tune of 6.3 uh, trillion naira, I think, mm. while the expenditure that goes uh, to capital, infrastructure and capital projects is only 5 point something uh, trillion naira. That means what the government is going to uh, spend in servicing debt is nearly 18 percent, is more than 18 percent of what it budgeted to spend in, 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 in capital project. Combined three to four uh, capital uh, expenditure components in the country, to mention uh, but few, look at uh, water, look at uh, in other infrastructural uh, aspect, roads, constructions, and all that, including agriculture, combine them all. They didn't accumulate to uh, com combine them all. They didn't accumulate to reach the amount that is go been going to be spent on, uh, on, 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 on spending, on, on government borrowings to service debt. So once we find ourselves in, 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 in such situation, I think it's a very sad one. So we need to revisit, the government has to revisit, uh, thank God uh, the president have passed, have pre made his presentation before the National Assembly, and I hope and pray that they will do the needful. Even the budget uh, in the National Assembly is questionable. For the first time it has reached its peak, they budgeted over 160 something uh, billion just for the National Assembly. How is that going to impact on the lives of the ordinary citizens in the country? Okay, you, you've raised um, so many questions uh, with regards to the budget and um, how the budget can be funded. And you've also raised issues with regards to um, the, the to, um, 20.5 um, 20 um, 1 trillion era, um, total expenditure, most especially um, the issue of the capital expenditure, which is over 5 um, trillion naira. But now, when you look at the issue of um, the revenue we generate and how we can be able to like um, push the budget to proper um, implementation, um, it shows that oil revenue will be 1.92 trillion. That was the pact. And then um, that of non-oil revenue, 2.43 trillion. Independent revenue uh, will, be, will be tagged at 2.21 trillion. So when you compare the issue of the oil revenue and non-oil revenue, are you, are you satisfied that, um, to a greater extent, we are still having, uh, we are not, we've not really diversified to get other um, economical sector that can push for uh, more revenue for us to be able to implement some of the things we need to do with respect to the budget? Well, uh, frankly speaking, in terms of uh, diversifying our economy, I know uh, the government is very loud about it. But the reality is that not much has been done on that aspect. What are the key drivers of our economic activities? Number one is infrastructure. I just finished highlighting that not much do is done 
in terms of infrastructural revamp in the country, in spite of the clamor and the agitation that all the borrowings is going to service infrastructure, okay. which invariably is going to enhance economic activities and also increase the revenue streams in the country. And I told another key aspect also is industrialization. You know, uh, small and medium uh, scale enterprise. You have to boost them. You have to incentivize uh, the operationalization of such uh, businesses. Collectively, it will aggregate to uh, bring about more streams of income. Investor confidence, build it. How can you build it? You have to have uh, a good infrastructural uh, outlay to be able to attract them. Also, the monetary policy. Today, investors are very skeptical of bringing uh, money into the country because they don't know how to repatriate their funds. So this is another, is a major uh, pitfall in, in, in trying to enhance and improve uh, our income streams, you know. And also you look at also uh, this increase in, 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 in borrowing rates, in lending rates that uh, the... The forex. The, the, not even the forex, okay. the monetary policy the monetary I'm talking policy. by the okay. central bank. It is... Uh, uh, it, is, it, it is trying to always promote the retractionary uh, monetary policy whereby it feels that there is inflation and what they would have to do to cut, or to cut down the inflation is by increasing the monetary rate, that's the lending rate. But invariably that has an effect on uh, local businesses and even foreign investors because one key factor that incentivizes investors to, that incentivizes manufacturing and pro, uh, uh, production activities is the cheap uh, or the easy access uh, to funds. So now you have increased the lending rate. What investor would see it as economically viable to come and uh, start getting access to monies they are not sure of uh, paying back? So it has another side effect. So we have to look at all these policies. Also the foreign exchange uh, policy. I have uh, mentioned to you earlier that uh, I am not of the opinion that uh, we, 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 operate, we, we have a, a bank rate, a bank uh, foreign exchange rate, and also the black market rate. It's of no use. It's something that the market needs to speak of it. The market needs to define at what rate dollar is, is, is going to be acquired or not. You know, so that is only when uh, the economic impact of dealing with uh, foreign exchanges will, have, will be impactful in the country. But other than that, I think we are just uh, trying, to self, to, 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 trying to tell ourselves lies because it, it's not going to help in any way uh, the economic activities in the country. Okay. People have also raised questions because um, earlier on you raised the issue of um, the forex and rest. Because for now, people have also raised questions that um, the best way that we can deal with um, this issue, most especially if we really want to implement um, the budgets, uh, getting funds, probably you open more tax nets for people to be able to pay tax. Should that be a major issue for us to achieve um, the goal for the 2023 budget that was presented? Well, uh Opening a tax net in order to uh, incentivize Finance, yeah. uh, uh, businesses is a good one, but to what extent and how sustainable is that? And we should look at antecedents. Who are the beneficiaries of this tax net? Are they the SMEs, the small and medium scale enterprise, or are they the big players that we generally seem to have monopolized mm. uh, the entire business, manufacturing, and production space. So all these things are, are important. SMEs plays an integral role in supporting economic activities, adding up to the gross domestic, domestic products in the country and all that. So we have to align that properly so that we can address the key challenges of optimizing uh, our revenue and our income streams as a as, as an economic uh, sovereign entity. Okay, um, thank you, Farouk. Uh, but then, you know, the issue of budget um, is very, very key 
most especially even states now have started the process uh, to see that as they present the budget, Cardinal State did just of recent. But the major question here is looking at the inflation rate. Mm. Um, it is not uh, on the better side for us as a nation. But people still believe that, okay, still we are still um, doing better despite the fact that we're having this um, high inflation rate. Mm -hmm. But one key factor you've earlier noticed is the issue from the parallel market and then the banks. How can we stabilize this issue of the forex so that we have enough for businesses, for transactions, and also it will also get to the government coffers and then we can do other things um, to make the economy move forward? You see, the foreign exchange is a derivative. The foreign exchange rate is a derivative of various uh, economic activities and also uh, uh, government policies around that. You know, so unless and until we make that right, I think it will always remain difficult. For instance, one of the major, you mentioned inflation. Mm -hmm. One of the major factors that leads to inflation is the volatility in our exchange rate because you spend much to import uh, machineries and other uh, pr uh, production uh, raw materials or equipment. You get it. You spend much, therefore it will uh, increase the overall uh, 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 inflation rate. So look at also the key drivers of uh, the uh, foreign exchange rate I told you is economic activities. Mm -hmm. Industrialization, strengthen it, incentivize it, make, uh, have the infrastructural base that will complement manufacturing and production. Have a secured environment and all that, you know. Quite sure we know that if the world generally is challenged with a lot of uh, economic uh, issues, which uh, inflation rate is, 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 is one of those, you know, food scarcity and all that. And also uh, the problem, the issue around the global oil price and uh, the global oil production and uh, market chain. It's been affected by many things such as the Russia-Ukraine uh, crisis, you know. There's food crisis also. The, the Russia-Ukraine uh, uh, crisis have made it uh, difficult for import-based countries, you know, to find easy access even to the needed uh, foods or raw materials necessary to pro for, 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 for food production. So these are another key aspect. In Nigeria also you look at the, the flood, you know, this flood has drastically affected us. The prices of foods you know, it, mm. it, it's it's skyrocketing, and we are going to even experience more because now that is expected that it's the peak of food production, it's been also now affected by by, by, by flood, by the flood, in in various states like Benue, Taraba, you know, and even Kogi, you know. So this have also uh, a domino effect in also uh, the the value of or the cost of goods and services, especially food items. Okay, um, thank you, Afaruk. Um, but then we will have to go on a very short break because um, this issue is very, very important that Nigeria understand what it means um, for the president to present a budget before the National Assembly, um, for the MDAs to go defend the budget, and then all that procedures takes place. But um, then we have to also break it down that Nigerians, this is how this budget has been formulated so that we all have a better understanding of what it means to have a budget for 2023. Um, yeah, so we'll go on a very short break and when we return, we continue with the conversation. We are a nation blessed with people of diverse cultures, religions, languages, and opinions. It is ironic that we are now being ripped apart by our greatest strength, our diversity. We have allowed intolerance, insensitivity, bigotry and nepotism to blind our vision of the greatness we can achieve working together as one. We may not have the same culture, nor religion, nor language, but we all belong to the same nation by the divine will of God. 
we did not choose to be Nigerians. Nigeria chose us. This nation is our divine heritage. And if we open our eyes, we would realize that what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And by the comparison and conciliation of our differences, we will grow until our differences disappear. Our unity cannot be willed by mere declarations, nor do we get unity by ignoring the questions that beg for answers. We must celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our unity. Our strength is not in our numbers, but in our unity, because even the weak become strong when united. Nigeria Unite! This message is brought to you by Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, owners and operators of ASO Radio 93.5 FM Abuja, ASO Television, DSTV, Channel 392, Star Times Terrestrial, Channel 127, Free TV, Channel 507, People's TV, Channel 285, and UHF, Channel 38. Sir, can you please give us the permission to search you? You can go. Is this a movie? If it happened. And go station. When I oga come, you come with that for dear. Hey, Mr. Man, I cannot do that. Uh -uh. Tell your girl to come to our station when he returns. Am I in a movie? If it happened, <laughs> Mama, please. <laughs> Mama, please. Thank God you're here. Do the need. Mama, please. Just three weeks Madam, now. Why did you invite us to come help chase your tenants now? This is a civil matter now. Is this a movie? If it's happened, if we follow the new police law. Welcome back. I'm still with me in the studio is Farouk Abdullah, financial analyst. And um, we're discussing the issue of the 2023 um, proposed um, budget um, framework. And you've stated so much with regards to um, the issue of how the budget can be financed. But then, one major issue or one key issue that has to do with this budget is the issue of subsidy. Uh, what's your take on that? Uh, thank you, Issa. The issue with the budget has been a very debatable one. Some economic experts believe that uh, the budget, the subsidy should remain because it gives relief to uh, the disadvantaged or the poor uh, population in the country, while others are of the view that it is, it, it is a bad one due to obvious reasons that it is taking up chunk of uh, the revenue generated in the country. Mm. But however, uh, my opinion on the entire subsidy thing is that it should be removed, you know, because it is cancerous to the Nigerian economy and to the Nigerian system. It gives room for uh, corruption. Till today, we cannot accurately account for our daily consumption of uh, petroleum products. The figures in uh, the, the, the daily pr uh, consumption of, let's say, PMS in the country, if you go through the different MDAs or departments in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, they give different figures. You know? So which one are we to believe and which one are we not to believe? And what is their own criteria of uh, benchmarking what is needed to be paid as subsidy. So there is a lot of scam, uh, corruption and fraud in the entire uh, fuel subsidy uh, scheme. So uh, I believe that should be removed, you know. Gradually they should have different phases of removing it, let's say within a year or two. Uh, gradually we should get used to th that. And my opinion is that it is even better that we uh, remove the petrol subsidy 
and also give subsidy in diesel because diesel uh, promotes industrial activities. It, 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 it gives, it lessens the, the, the burden on the cost of production, which invariably affects the prices of goods and services. But PMS uh, is a consumption-based uh, uh, commodity, you know, that doesn't necessarily at all instances translate to economic activities, you know. So the government have to really remove that. That is my take. Okay, that. let us quickly look at the 2023 proposed um, budget um, released by um, framework released by um, budget um, so that you also take a cue from what um, was released by budget. Okay, now if you look at the screen there, you, you discover that um, um, just like I stated earlier in terms of the revenue, oil revenue is 1.92 um, trillion and then non-oil revenue to be 2.43 trillion, independent revenue to be 2.21 um, other revenue to be 7.62 billion and retained revenue for GOEs to be 2.42 trillion. Um, so are you satisfied with this focus of revenue generation? Well, I told you uh, I have a problem with the underlying assumptions that led to defining these uh, components in the budget in terms of the uh, revenue and the expenditure. Mm. You get it. With the, pro with the oil production, uh, revenue from the oil that is projected to be 1.9 trillion, how realistic is that? I know we, uh, now there is progress in the discovery of pipeline vandalism and all that, you know. And, but then there are also other issues that are associated with the oil production. And also the price of the crude oil that is benchmarked at uh, $70 uh, per barrel. I, I believe once it gets to the National Assembly, they will try to increase the, the, the benchmark. They will say it is not optimistic. They will give an excessively uh, optimistic figure, which in the end will uh, entirely defeat the idea of having uh, a good budget. You understand? So it's not a realistic one. To be honest, but, but then what in respect to the total expenditure? Uh, if we can still have um, that clip there, um, the, 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 the graphics there, if we can still have it with respect to the total expenditure, um, recurrent expenditure to be 8.27 um, trillion pension, gratuity, retirees, benefits. These are also a whole lot of money um, that will be taken out, and then you don't really see the fallback to the community and society, absolutely. What is being paid as salaries and gratuities and pensions are recurrent expenditures mm. that doesn't necessarily translate into any economic activities. You know, it's something that uh, uh, you, you, we, we can consider as a liability, mm. you know. So now I make a simple analysis uh, the other time. You are, the Niger, Ni Nigeria budgeted 20.5 trillion naira. Uh, as the total expenditure. It equally budgeted uh, 10.8, uh, mm. uh, it budgeted 10.78, around 9.73 trillion. Uh, uh, trillion as uh, revenue. revenue. revenue yeah. You get it. Now, you take the debt servicing, which is 6 point something trillion, we'll be left with how much? 14 point something uh, trillion, which is the total money that is going to finance, be available to finance the budget. So in real terms, that 14 point uh, three, uh, that 14 point something trillions, narrow it down, out of it, a chunk part of it is going as, uh, as other recurrent expenditure. How much is going to be paid to personnel and staff and all that, uh, salaries and gratuities and all that. Another 6 point something uh, trillion or even more will be wiped out, or 8 point something trillion will be wiped out. So that means Nigeria is left with only 5.35 uh, trillion naira to be invested in uh, capital uh, projects, which are the key drivers of economic activities. So how fair are we? You understand? I tell you, if you remove all this component and with the unrealistic nature of this budget based on the assumptions that I don't seem to agree with, we'll end up borrowing to finance the entire budget in 2023. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? Because nothing is working out. Nothing is in good shape in the country. So this is nothing but the reality about it. We must have to live by it. Uh, IMF and World Bank have projected that uh, in, 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 in 2026, Nigeria will not even have any revenue because all the Nigeria's revenue will be going uh, to finance debt. You understand? So how about uh, the other recurrent expenditure like personnel and other overhead costs? Who is going to finance that? That means we have to keep borrowing, we have to keep borrowing till, till we explode. Imagine you are running, you, you have a household, you earn $100 uh, uh, dollar per day, and you have to borrow another $100 or more than $100 to take care of your health, to take care of your children's uh, school, what you are going to eat, and other basic needs. How can you hold on to that? And each and every day you keep uh, uh, increasing uh, your finances. So I think it is, we are, having, we are not having a realistic financial uh, model in terms of budgeting, in terms of projections and all that. We have to be very realistic in, in our approach as a country. Only then we will be able to get out of this economic uh, problems. Okay. Now, let me quickly ask you, because um, you've raised um, so many issues with regards to um, the budget and um, you try as much as possible to be frank. But then you also know that um, even the government, the present administration, has done um, so much with regards to the issue of um, capital um, projects across the country, the road network, the train, so many other. Even in agri, we've seen money being given to see that um, people can go back to farm and then make sure that, yes, we have a stable Unfortunately, that may not be enough for now. But now that we are at this particular point in time where election is fast approaching, do you see any major impact this election is going to have on the implementation of this budget if everything goes as, as presented by the president? When is the next election? In February 2023. And today we are at the penultimate year of the election. In a few months' time, we'll get into the election year. Mm. So tell me, although I see the president have called on his, upon his ministers and uh, uh, civil servants to focus on uh, working rather than concentrating in electioneering activities, but do you think that is the reality we are into today? It is not. You know, we are barely, our, the concentration and the mind and mindset is not there. Let's be very frank and be very realistic. What capital project do you see are still uh, on the pipeline? I know much has been done, but what has been done is not good enough for a country like Nigeria. You know, we call ourselves always a giant of Africa. We call ourselves with the highest GDP in Africa at some point in time, but yet we cannot manage our infrastructural expansion, you know, and revamp. So how do you expect us to get out of these problems if we don't address it. So I don't see uh, this period as a good time for economic uh, prosperity in the country, frankly speaking, because investors are very skeptical because they don't know the type of government that is going to come into the country. Also, another issue is a security challenge. You know, that has to be addressed. You know, nobody would want to come and invest in a very risky environment. This is the reality. We must speak of it. So the government needs to do more. The government is trying, but what the government is doing is not good enough. You know, more needs to be done. You understand? So we have to be very fair to ourselves. Now, this is the last budget being presented um, by the president. Uh, you know, in 2023, um, definitely we'll have a new um, government. And um, looking at all that has been said now, uh, w what would be your major advice um, to the president with respect to how he hands his tenure? with regards to budget and budget implementation. What has been my what? Your major advice to the president at this particular advice. point in time now. Well, this is, uh, we are getting to the eighth year of the president's administration. Mm. And quite frankly, we know that uh, Nigeria has been troubled with a lot of challenges. Some are globally driven, while some are locally driven. But the government have tried in their own way to have a turnaround on all these issues. But I feel the economic team 
ought to have done more. The economic team and the security architecture in the country ought to have done more in solving most of our critical uh, problems. When the, during the government speech in 2015, uh, the president's speech in 2015, part of the key things that uh, he mentioned that he's going to address is the issue of uh, government spending. Uh, but today, what happened? Government spending keeps increasing year after year till today. The debt profile is not in any way good. Inflation is on the rise. You know, corruption, oil thief, uh, theft, banditry, and all sorts of uh, economic and social uh, problems is characterized in this uh, government, you know. I am not blaming the government, obviously, but all I am saying is that the government ought to have done more. But therefore, since we are on the transition uh, stage, uh, the government have to be more realistic in their budgeting and all that. Now that everything is with the National Assembly, they have to look at it with their critical lens of responsibility to determine what is viable uh, to the peculiarity in this country and what is not. Let them be realistic even with their budgets. 1.160 something uh, billion, which is the highest in the country. Does that speak of good uh, uh, budgeting system in the country? Look at the spending spree as indicated in the budget in FIRS, let's see, as an agency. I just saw one place where uniforms uh, was uniforms for drivers and cleaners is budgeted for about two billion naira. Are we really serious? So, frankly speaking, we have to cut down cost. Agencies and MDAs that are redundant have to be cut down. You know, things and strategies that can optimize revenue and income streams have to be revisited in a realistic uh, uh, manner. Only then we can get out of the problem and challenges we are into. And it is uh, the responsibility of this government. Let them lay down a good foundation that will make the next government uh, uh, bear the burden. Because any government that is going to come, I pity that government. I pity with, the, with government. the current reality. With the current mean. reality, I pity the next administration, be it APC, PDP, uh, or, or, or any uh, party. What the government is going to inherit is a greater challenge than what this administration has gone through. Some are globally driven, as I told you, while well, some are locally. We need to fight the problem with insecurity. Uh, we need to improve on our uh, manufacturing and productive capacities. You know, we need to also, as individuals, have the mindset of patriotism and okay. all that. Thank you so much, Amfaruk Abdullahi, for joining us today on the afternoon edition. Um, you've really enlightened us with respect to all we need to do. And you've stated it very clearly um, that the next administration will have to prepare better than um, what we have today. This is how far we can go today on the afternoon edition. My name is Isanu. Have a wonderful day and stay blessed.